So heavy spoiler alert, this device that I'm reviewing today is one of my favorite devices that I've reviewed on this channel so far. This is a wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver kit from a company called Yeehaw, and I'm using the transmitter to broadcast the HDMI signal out of my camera into this device, and then I'm using the HDMI output from this device into a capture card. So I'm doing this uh, wirelessly right now, and this is what the video quality looks like. Now granted, the transmitter is only a few feet away from the receiver right now, but we're going to get into uh, deeper parts of that in the review and we're going to show how good the video quality is at extreme distances through walls and all of that good stuff. And as a quick disclaimer, Yeehaw did send me this device in return for a fair and honest review. I am not at all affiliated with Yeehaw, nor do I represent them in any way. All opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So here's the box, and inside the box, of course, we get the obligatory paperwork. Gross. Here is the transmitter, a USB power adapter, two antenna, and here's the receiver, on which we have our antenna ports, an audio output port, USB-C for power, an HDMI output, and a VGA output. In the bottom of the box, we have a couple of USB cables for power. Attaching the antenna are pretty straightforward. And with that, we're ready to set up the device. All right, so this should be a pretty good demonstration of how everything works. I've got the Yeehaw HDMI receiver here, and this is running into a capture card here via a really short HDMI cable right here. Hope you can see that okay. And um, I've got my Surface Pro tablet here, and I've got the uh, HDMI output of this device and I've got the receiver here. So when I plug this receiver in, it should pair to this device and it should start broadcasting into the capture card. I'm gonna bring the capture card's uh, input onto the screen now. So this is what we see. This is the actual, what we're seeing on screen here is the actual output of this HDMI device. So when I plug this in, okay, some devices are not powerful enough to provide the HDMI signal out through this transmitter. So that's where we would need to use the powered USB-C port uh, to provide additional power to this device. So I'm going to plug this in here, and I'm going to plug this into the USB port of the Surface Pro. And now we see that the blue light came on, and it's going to start transmitting this signal out to the, uh, here we go, something, and there we go. So this is all transmitting wirelessly now, and this was just to show you how all of this works. So if I move the mouse around here, we should see it happening on screen. And um, so that that's working out pretty good with the transmitter. I do want to show you one other thing, and that is that um, if we disconnect the transmitter completely on the screen for the uh, the receiver here. Let me go full screen with this. On the screen for the receiver here, we can also use this device as a Miracast device. So I'm going to show you how that works now. And we connect via Wi-Fi to the uh, Yeehaw device, which I'm connected to that now. And then down in the uh, Windows Action Center, we can select Project. And I can duplicate the screen. I can connect to a wireless display. I can select the Yeehaw device. And we can see that the uh, Yeehaw, this is connected over Miracast, and I'm not, I don't even have the uh, transmitter connected. So that's a pretty nice feature. But uh, in my experience, Miracast is a, um, you know, it's, it's a hit or miss kind of protocol. So um, I'm going to go full screen with this. 
so yeah, I'm connected to the device via Miracast now. And um, But anyway, for the remainder of all of the tests in this video, I will be doing all of the tests using this wireless transmitter. And for the purposes of most of these tests, I'll be using this Android TV box. As I'll be playing back video and we'll be looking at the video quality, I'm going to power that on now. And as we see, I don't need to add the USB-C to power this device through this uh, droid box. This, this droid box pushes a strong enough signal through the transmitter that I don't need to use the uh, USB-C cable. So that's a handy thing to keep in mind too. We can see that this droid box is indeed pushing a signal. As far as a test for video quality loss, I recorded the first clip directly into my capture card with the aforementioned Android TV box. And the second recording is over Wi-Fi with that same Android TV box. I synced them up as close as I could, and here's a side-by-side -side for what the video quality looks like. I don't see any difference in the video quality, and I'm extremely impressed with what this device can do. I think over wireless there may be a dropped frame here and there, but I don't think it's going to result in a ruined viewing experience for anyone. And as a side note, I do want to mention that the HDMI over Wi-Fi does indeed carry audio as well. Everything has all been very good and impressive up to this point, but the transmitter and receiver have been fairly close to each other within a few feet. And for this part of the test, I moved the transmitter to the back of my house and the receiver to the front of my house upstairs, and there's about 40 feet and two walls between them, and as you can see, the signal is holding up pretty well in this clip. As for my final range test, I took this device to work with me and I got my friend Mike to help me record this quick and dirty extreme range test. As you can see here, we have the receiver running into a field recorder and I have the transmitter sloppily attached to the HDMI output of one of our cameras. I apologize if you get seasick here, but we were testing for extreme motion and range, trying to see if we could get it to drop frames, so I intentionally moved the camera around a lot. Recording. Now we're, we're going to record it, so... You're recording it on here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, just give me a hand signal when it cuts out. Stay there, I'm gonna back up. 
I'm pretty impressed with this performance, and by my best guess, there is about approximately 150 feet between us. Just bear in mind that this is pretty much a straight shot and an almost perfect line of sight with almost no obstructions. And usage may vary with things like the number of walls between the transmitter and receiver and wireless interference and things like that. Now the question that I always get whenever I review a device like this is, can I use this to play my video games? And I'm going to say, yes, you can, but it's probably not going to be an optimal setup. There is a very minor delay in the video from this device. It's not enough that if you were using this for like a streaming broadcast where you had a multi-cam setup and one cam was cabled in and this one was coming in wirelessly, the delay is very unnoticeable in a situation like that. But like I said, for video games, it's probably not something that you would want to use and seems a little bit impractical for that kind of use anyway. But I've got a webcam on screen now for this picture in picture, and you can see that there is a very minor delay with what's going on on screen as I move my hand around. You can see that it happens on the webcam a lot faster, and that's because the webcam is probably happening a little bit closer to real time than everything going over this wireless. As you can see, the delay is very minor, but it does exist, so this is probably not a practical solution for playing video games. Normally this is the part of the video where I would give you my final opinion of this device, but I think my enthusiasm and the performance of the device throughout this video speaks for itself, so I'm going to leave it up to you what you think. Thank you so much for watching, that's it for now, and I'll see you next time.